If you're a med student, head to mosaic.org for free medical study notes and resources from other med students from around the world. Today we're going to be talking about the thyroid cartilage and we're going to talk about the anatomy of it and to conceptualize it, we're going to take you through the steps for how to draw it. So basically, you can start out just by doing a simple pentagon. And as you approach the apex, just here, you don't extend up to the top. What you do is you actually end up reflecting the apex back downwards, like you see here, heading back down, um, exactly the same dimensions for which it would have been going upwards. So then you've got to draw in the superior cornu. And to do that, they're about twice the height that the apex has gone downwards. And then they continue on all the way down and you have these short stubs which are the inferior cornu. And when I finish the other side here, that is basically the shape of the thyroid cartilage as viewed from the front. So I'm just going to go a little bit crazy um, shaving everything in. But by and large, that's how you draw it. So what's it actually composed of? So it's, it's composed of two lamina. And the two lamina fuse in their inferior, inferior two-thirds. And we call those two-thirds, we call them the prominence. And that's the Adam's apple. Now, that structure, which I already referred to, is the superior cornu. We'll talk about what that does in a sec. And this is the inferior cornu. And finally, that area that I shaded very heavily, that is the oblique line. And that's very important for muscular attachments, as we'll talk about. Okay, now we're going to draw it from the lateral aspect. And all you really need to remember is that from the lateral aspect, it looks like one of those giant bubble font Ds that uh, you used to do in primary school. Um, and the body of the D is basically formed by the lamina. Um, and the stem of the D, which we're drawing now, basically looks like uh, the, is, is the superior horn and the inferior horn. Um, and so I'm just going to change. It's not quite... Uh, a body isn't quite a circle, so I'm just going to change it very slightly from the outline that I've drawn. Um, but otherwise, that's basically what it looks like laterally, and now I'm just going to shade it again. So I've just scanned in the drawings that we did, and I'm really pleased with the results. And now we're going to use them to talk about uh, the attachments of the, th of the thyroid cartilage. So, there are three main attachments um, that extend up superiorly, and because superiorly is the hyoid bone, um, they're basically all termed thyrohyoid structures. So, from the superior cornu, there's ligaments that extend up, sorry, from the superior cornu, there's ligaments that attach upwards um, to the hyoid, and not surprisingly, um, there's one for each of the corneas, and they're called the lateral thyrohyoid ligaments. Okay, lateral thyrohyoid ligaments. Now, there's a very similar thing uh, which happens in the midline from the thyroid notch, like this. And that that is simply that is simply the um, the middle uh, thyrohyoid ligament. And it goes up to exactly the same level as the other two, even though they've got a bit of a head start with the superior corneas already extending upwards. Now, what happens um, in between those structures is that the gaps amongst them are basically filled in uh, by the thyrohyoid membrane. 
Okay, so I've just labeled those structures that we were talking about. Um, and I've also just, just here, I've just put in the Um, the thyrohyoid membrane, um, as you know, as it would be pictured laterally, trying to make it look nice. Now there is a foramen that's in the thyrohyoid membrane, um, and that's for the neurovascular structures. So they are the superior laryngeal artery and um, the internal laryngeal nerve, and they they uh, pass into the thyrohyoid membrane just anterior to just anterior to this um, the greater horn you or the superior horn um, of the thyroid cartilage. Now the oblique line which I've drawn in here like this and which you can see better in this one here uh, has two important muscular attachments. So the first one is the inferior constrictor muscle and I'm just going to draw the inferior muscle its fibers attach in like this and it then surrounds the midline viscera and then there are also the strap muscles coming from the sternum attaching to the hyoid so that's the sorry to the thyroid to the thyroid cartilage so that's the sternothyroidus or sternothyroid muscle and the other clinical implication of these is that uh, because of these muscles and because of the uh, pretracheal fascia, which is covering, uh, especially covering the inferior constrictor, if the thyroid gland, which is sitting just beneath this, is to enlarge, um, and if the superior lobes are to enlarge, they're never able to really get above the ob this oblique line of the thyroid cartilage because there's no way for them to somehow get above um, these muscular attachments. So the muscular attachments basically limit um, the upward extent to which hypertrophy of the, of the gland can ascend.